Aeroponic cloning machines can be very expensive to buy, so knowing how to make one yourself is a huge money saver. Today we're going to be quickly going over how you can make your very own aeroponic cloner at home with some affordable materials that can all be found at your local hardware store. Before we start though, I wanted to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Viper Spectra. Since 2011, Viper Spectra has been manufacturing a wide array of quality LED lights suitable for grows of all different sizes. Right now, get 8% off all Viper Spectra products site-wide using discount code CANADIANGROW. Shipping is available across the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK, and throughout Europe. So, if you're looking for a new grow light, make sure to check out the links we have posted down below. Okay, to get started, we're only gonna be needing a few items, so let's go over them really fast. Now to start, you can use any size container you prefer, but for this video, we are gonna be making our cloner using a small black five gallon bucket with the lid. Aside from that, we're just gonna be needing about two and a half feet of some half inch tubing, three half inch barbed T connectors, four of these 360 degree sprayer nozzles, some three inch neoprene collars, a repeat cycle timer, submersible water pump, and finally some three inch net pots. As for the tools to get the job done, we're just gonna be using a drill equipped with a three inch hole saw bit that we're gonna use to make the holes in our bucket lid. Aside from that, we're probably just gonna need some scissors or something sharp that we can use to cut the tubing with. All right, now that we have all of the materials gathered, we can get to work. And the first step is going to be building the manifold for our cloning machine. Now the manifold is what moves the water mist through the sprayers and onto the plant's roots. Some people do prefer using PVC pipe to make the manifold, but we are gonna be using some soft rubber tubing instead. It's super easy to work with, very affordable, making it you know easy to replace if need be. To start, we're going to be cutting the black half-inch tubing into smaller pieces. Specifically, we need three separate two-inch pieces, and then we're also going to cut out two 10-inch pieces of the tubing. Once that's done, we're going to grab some of the half-inch T-connectors and start attaching them to the tubing. With this first one, we're going to be placing a piece of the two-inch tubing on all three sides, just like this. Next, we're going to take the other two barbed T connectors and attach them to the already connected tubing, such as seen here. Finally, we're gonna be attaching the two pieces of 10 inch tubing along each side. As you can see, we're trying to make a circular shape with the tubing that kind of looks like a steering wheel. Now, before we attach the water pump, we're going to be grabbing four of these 360 degree sprayer nozzles and press them into the tubing. The goal here is to create a square shape with the noses when placing them so the sprayers can cover as much area as possible. Now, the nozzles do have pointed tips and can be securely screwed into place, but puncturing a small hole in the tubing first can make things easier. We actually just ended up using a little screw to do this, but you know, whatever works for you. You just need to make sure that the nozzles are snug in the tubing, so don't make the holes too big. Okay, now that we have the manifold built, the next step is going to be drilling some large holes on top of the five gallon bucket lid, where we're going to be placing the net pots and neoprene collars. Right now, we're only going to be making a simple two-site aeroponic system. However, the average five-gallon bucket lid can fit about seven of these three-inch net pots across its surface, so you can scale up or down depending on what your preferences are. Now that we have the bucket lid ready, we can start inserting the net pots and neoprene collars into the drilled out holes, which should fit nice and tight. Now, some growers do prefer to put the neoprene collars directly into the drilled out holes. However, we recommend to avoid doing this because as the plant grows and becomes heavier, you run the risk of the neoprene collars potentially falling through the bucket lid and into the water beneath. Since net pots slightly taper as they go downward, this does prevent the collars from ever accidentally falling through. Now, if you are using this aeroponic system for cloning, you can simply cut the netting off of the pots, ultimately giving you that nice snug fit without having to deal with any of the roots getting entangled in the plastic netting. All right, with all of that out of the way, the final step for us is going to be making a small hole in the bucket that we're gonna use for pulling the water pump cord through, and that's about it. From here, the water pump cord will be plugged directly into the repeat cycle timer, which can be set to whichever time increments you need. When getting a timer, it is important that it has a setting for seconds. The perfect spray cycle is going to keep your roots moist without having too much excess water dripping off of them. For us, we're going to be setting it up so the pump turns on for 10 seconds every 5 minutes, which should keep our roots nice and healthy. 
Well, that just about does it for this video. Let us know down below in the comments how you guys like the shorter form content. And also, if you have any suggestions for what else you'd like to see here on the channel, make sure to drop those in the comments as well. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys checking us out here on Canadian Grower. Until next time, peace.